as we delve into the basement once more on this side. Not as someone who does not need something for the purposes of gambling addiction. Well, she needs stuff. Delirium, the two new endings. To oh yeah, last time I played this her, I died at like the beast fight, right? Let's try that again. We shall, oh, that's good too. We shall try for the beast as tainted, e ugh. My eyes have become mushroom. That's actually apropos for one of the things I wanted to talk about. I guess I'll start with that before moving on to the YouTube conversation. And yes, there will be a YouTube conversation because there's something to talk about. But I mentioned, I don't think it was on Monday stream because there was a Monday stream. I think it was on Sunday. Yeah, I'm going to let that explode again. My eye's been kind of bothering me since Friday there and on Saturday night. I kind of looked at it in the mirror and I was like, I, I think there's something there. Like, I see something on my eye. I wasn't 100% sure. I kind of took the, the pictures with my phone that I could. It was kind of awkward. I was still kind of like, I'm, I'm sure there's something there. So anyway, today I talked to an optometrist. Not in person, because they're still trying to avoid in-person me. Well, first of all, I was like, am I sure there's something there? Let's tell the story in full. So my mother visited not on Monday, but today. And I was like, can you can you have a look in my eye with a light shining on it? Because I think there's something there. And she she looked at it and was like, yeah, there is. I don't know what that is. I also do, And then I asked, like, do I go to the eye doctor or do I go to the doctor for that? And she was like, I don't know. So she was going to a pharmacist anyway, for not relevant reasons and asked them like is this a thing we go to you for <laughs> and then she she texted me and said okay they say go to the optometrist but they're not seeing anybody here's their email send them pictures but that was a problem because my phone's kind of old now and the the camera ain't great so i was like can you come back and use your phone because you've got a new fancy phone hello look hello perth so my mother came back again and took some pictures with her phone, sent them to my phone so I could then email the optometrist the pictures of my weird thing in my eye. And then later on this afternoon I finally got a reply back and I've forgotten what they called it. I did, I said it in Discord but I've forgotten what it's called, it's something cyst. Not blastocyst. What was it? Retentin? It was something like that. Someone will get it in a second. A retention? Yeah, that was a retention cyst. So I have like a weird raised bit on one of my eyes that's all kind of crusty and horrible. It isn't affecting my vision at all, just to be clear. It is irritating my eye because every time I blink, my eyelash or my, you know, eyelids are rubbing against it. Which is annoying, but it's not sore. So they said it's probably that and it'll clear up. It might take a few weeks to clear up, but... If it doesn't get any more painful or or any more serious, just kind of leave it be and, and wait and see, is, the, is what they said in the email I got back. Although I should be able to use like a generic eyedropper just to keep the eye lubricated so it doesn't rub as much. Don't take that out of context. And because it wasn't a face-to-face -face meeting, I couldn't ask like, is this just something that happens? <laughs> Did I do something? <laughs> Or is this just a thing that can happen? Like, your body just randomly decides to do stuff now and then? Like, grow things on your eyeball? But either way, at least it's, it seems not so bad unless it gets worse. And it was only really, like, I only started to notice I had a sore eye on, like, Friday-ish. And then on Saturday it was bugging me quite a bit. And then Sunday it was fine, Monday it was basically fine, just occasionally annoying me. And that's been the same today as well. I think we're putting it in warm water in the bath. So I was checking who was retweeting my go live tweet. It wasn't Valner, it's one of those generic Twitter accounts that just pick up on keywords like stream and try and advertise their shit to you. Oh, on that note though, I, my mother, when I told her what the optometrist said, 
I got a text back a little while later saying, okay, I've Googled it. And Google suggests that you press a hot compress against it and then it might burst. And I texted her back saying, is that a good thing with like three question marks? And then I, I waited a little bit and then she just replied, not sure, just an option. So thanks for that, mother. Ooh. Although that might kind of make sense, because like I say, I, I kind of, when I noticed something was up, I, I just kind of dunked my head in the bath. And it sort of felt better. Well, who needs to sleep? The answer to that question is me. I'd say just leave it. Yeah, I'm not going to go press it. Well, I did already press it a little bit, and I was weirded out by it being hard. But yeah, I'm just, I'm not going to touch it. I'll dunk it in, in my baths. Why not? There's no harm in doing that. But I'm just going to leave it and see what happens. Could you, could you bounce towards me instead of perfectly dodging? Thank you. Instead of perfectly dodging every shot. Love playing as this character with no damage, by the way. Although I haven't been paying attention if there were spare hearts. I probably could have had a couple of copies out, but whatever. So that's the story as it stands about my eye thing. To be concluded. Hopefully it won't take weeks to disappear. And as I say, my, my vision is not affected at all. At least so far, besides just having a slightly itchy, annoying eye. That was at least a relatively easy boss. Alright, when we go down to the next floor, we'll, we'll go to the main topic of conversation, which is doing a little test stream on YouTube on Monday. If you have any specific questions about it, we can get to that after I kind of just go over it. Bloody Penny might be really, really good for her. Guppy's tail and the horn? Little horn's horn, I think? Um, nah. So yeah, the, this whole started, or this whole thing started because two, three weeks ago, when I went to do my regular stream Tuesday to Sunday, I don't remember what day it was, but Twitch just went down. I think they got DDoS, something like that, not sure. And they were down for more or less the entirety of the time I would have streamed. I think even slightly longer than that. And I was kind of stuck without uh, an alternative at the time. But previously this year, Twitch changed the partner contract, which I am still under. I am still a Twitch partner. Because prior, partners weren't allowed to stream on any, any competition for Twitch. But they did update the terms to allow you to do that, just not at the same time. So you still can't do a simultaneous cast to YouTube and Twitch, or you know, Twitch or Facebook, etc, etc. But they at least let partners play the field a little bit, for lack of a better term. So the Monday following that day that Twitch was down, I took the time to kind of set up YouTube streaming just to have it as an option in case Twitch ever goes down again, and that's still the case. But I got kind of curious about how it would be to stream on YouTube, but I didn't want to interrupt my normal schedule because I'm a creature of habit and so are the viewers I still have left, quite frankly. So I didn't want to interrupt a Twitch day by suddenly changing it to YouTube. So I was like, I'll take some time out on my day off, test it out, just for a couple of hours, and it was almost exactly two hours on the dot. He is large. And if he touches me, I die, actually. He does two damage. Hang on. I'm focusing. Although I wouldn't mind if this restarted. We got one good item and that's it. So it was definitely an interesting experience in terms of, ooh, in terms of doing it. But don't take this as being indicative of if you started streaming on YouTube from zero. Because obviously I've got like 130,000 subscribers. So... Potentially that will get shown to quite a few people when if I try and stream so the numbers will be skewed. I mean you, just, you can still do it. I'm pretty sure this run's going to end in failure but we've got time for another. So as far as the back end goes, it's not nearly as tidy as Twitch. Twitch has got them absolutely blown out of the water in regards to that. 
It's also a little confusing because the way they word it with your streaming software if you're using third party, which I was, is like you go live on your streaming software, then it carries the signal over and you kind of mess with it and then go live when you're ready. That's what it said, but that's also a lie. Because <laughs> as soon as I press go live on, I was using OBS for it, just to make sure I wasn't accidentally streaming to Twitch as well, it went instantly live. It, it didn't hold the signal or anything like that until I was ready. So, either I did something wrong or they need to reword how that's like shown to the, the streamer. But in terms of like being able to schedule an event and, and whatnot, that's great. In general though, it's not quite... I don't want to these spawn on this floor. What happened there? It's not quite as robust as Twitch. Like you can't have like a a multi-part show really. You have to make your thumbnail in advance. You have to select the game in advance. Although like, you might be able to edit the tags and whatnot midstream. I didn't try and do that. But you couldn't do like a three-game docket on YouTube in the single stream. You would have to like break it up. So it's more like you're recording a live video than doing a live stream. And I know that's basically the same, but mechanically it's not quite. Oh, my glitch turned it into a harder enemy. Nice. That's great. Sure, let's just try it. What are you doing down there? Now, the upsides, though, of the experience of trying out streaming on YouTube. They don't have a hard or soft cap on bitrate. Well, well, I think they do, but it's, it's something absolutely insanely high, and I think that's probably on purpose to to try and like lure people over. Twitch has a soft cap of 6k in terms of bitrate, and a hard cap of about 8k. Now, I recently upped my bitrate a little bit above the soft cap, because I was curious if anyone would notice the visual difference. I did, ever so slightly. I think I put it at like 7. But 6 is where they want you to stay and they don't really mind if you go above that. But if you go above 8, that's when you start to have problems and they'll limit your stream quality. At least that was the word on the street when I researched it anyway. Retro nice. Vision. On YouTube though, go as high as your internet will allow. So for the test I did... 8k on the dot, I think, or it was 8.5. And watching the video back, it's a lot crisper. And during like high intensity, because we just played we just played Overwatch for it. And during like the high intensity fights, it wasn't nearly as pixelated. So the difference in quality, I definitely noticed. Audio was the same, more or less, but the video quality was crisper. So it definitely had that in its favour. Uh, moderation tools seem to be a little bit lacking, not that we really needed them, but just in general that's something I noticed. And I wasn't used to looking at the uh, a chat that doesn't look like Twitch chat. I've been looking at Twitch chat for like six, almost seven years now. So I wasn't used to it and it was a little bit difficult. In general it's difficult to keep up with if you're playing a, a game that requires a lot of attention like Overwatch. Especially if you're playing as like fast characters, which I've taken a liking to. But I was finding that even harder with the YouTube chat, to be honest. And trying to keep up a conversation with whoever's in the call at the time, obviously, as well. I'm not allowed to stream it at the same time switching YouTube, no. The partner contract still disallows that. And it was only recently that they changed it to let me stream on anything at all besides Twitch. I think I was talking about that before the change happened and described it as a, it is a little bit like Golden Shackles if at one point you did have great viewership and now don't. But you're still bound by the partner contract and you don't really want to get brought back down to affiliate because that would mean that you're cut on um, what you get paid from subs and whatnot goes down. Well, from tier 2 and tier 3 subs. But it was nice to know that my internet connection can hold a uh, an 8k stream, like didn't have any issues, as far as I'm aware didn't have any drop frames. And in terms of viewership, 
again, this is a bit skewed because I have so many subscribers on YouTube, so surely that probably influenced it a little bit. But viewership was a lot higher than on Twitch. Concurrent viewers was almost triple. And VOD views are almost triple as well. So that's what it's got going for it. In terms of negatives, it definitely doesn't have the monetization that Twitch does in a good and bad way, kind of. Like, there's super chats and some people were very nice to be giving super chats. But that's not like a consistent monthly thing, obviously. That's just... That's someone giving a tip within YouTube, essentially. It has memberships, which Balmog was willing to test. Which is, but doesn't really offer the same kind of incentives as a Twitch subscription does. And it doesn't have anything like bits and, and global emotes. Well, it does have global emotes, but most of them are garbage. You were going to do a super chat, but you've not connected payment to YouTube. See, that's another thing. You probably can't just use PayPal, right? You, you have to have, like, a card on Google, which isn't great. Oh, and that's another downside. Most people were stuck using their real names because otherwise YouTube won't let you use the nickname unless you've got a YouTube channel using your nickname. Which is not great. But overall, I did like it. I wish I could simultaneously stream to YouTube and Twitch. That would be the ideal. But that is not the case, and unfortunately, I need the income I have from Twitch too much to risk doing a full switch over to YouTube and hoping that Super Chats and memberships would carry the the weight of my bills. Especially with how bad things... Have you seen how bad things are in the UK right now? Actually, there's a there's a lovely gaslighting piece going around. I want to see, hang on. I want to read it verbatim. Hang on. I saw it. Like some. Where is it? Hang on. Hang on. I saw it. My editor, my old editor, saw it as well because that's how I saw it. They retweeted it. Oh, it's not there. You know how it has like the sidebar where it suggests stories. It's from the Times. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it's from the Telegraph. I lived without central heating for ten years. Here's how you can too. Like, just gaslighting being able to exist with absolutely no heating in what will be a terrible, terrible, freezing cold winter. Like, that's the kind of situation the UK is in right now. You started to watch the VOD yesterday and can't see the chat. See, that's the other weird thing. I've switched on live chat or whatever it's called, or chat replay, sorry, that's what it's called. And I went to the video and was like, hang on a second, the chat replay isn't playing. I double checked, it definitely is ticked. It might just take a while to process it or something, or maybe it just sometimes glitches. It's supposed to show the live chat. I don't know why it's not. Oh, and I didn't have monetization on when I did the live stream on YouTube, so there was like no ads or whatever, but for the VOD I switched them on. But I guess that's another way you could make money on live streams, that when you live stream, have pre-rolls. It does let you do that by just like monetizing through the standard system that exists on YouTube. Oh, it takes a while, okay. Oh, it is there today, perfect. Because I actually kind of want to go back and watch because I know I missed stuff. It was pretty fun, everyone was chill. I was expecting like, uh, if it was being shown to all my subscribers, like some trolls to come out of the woodwork and be like, I thought you were dead, you know, that kind of crap. I don't know why I deliberately took that range down. I guess because I'm ready to be gone out of this run and try another. <clears throat> you can have some heat here I'm melting. See, the hilarious thing is, even if you do have enough money to keep your heating on this winter in the UK, there might just not be enough power to go around, so you kind of just have to hope. Like, things are actually that bad. That's why I've stopped buying miniatures. Oh. Like, I'm, I'm forcing myself not to buy any more miniatures because I'm genuinely concerned about costs this winter. Like, things are that bad in this country. Oh. Oh, so the glitch turned into that, I see. How is that helpful? Straw is good, but Blargo Flargo is also good.
You're Neptune. Damn it. Still good, but... I thought I'll recognize the logo for once. That's messed up. Yes, it is. And that's despite getting uh, like 400 quid from the government to help cover heating costs. Oh. Well, that's everybody in the country is getting that if you're unaware. That's their answer to the, the rates of power doubling. It was going to be more than double, but the government stepped in to stop it being more than double. See, mine would have been more than double, but I I have, like, state-of-the-art, or, like, well, state-of-the-art as of five years ago. Electric radiators, so I can schedule. Like, they have programmable schedules, and I mucked around with my schedules and turned off all the ones I have downstairs. Well, I have two downstairs. And as a result, I'm saving, like, £3.50 a day, which is actually quite a lot of money when you do the maths. Because I'm never downstairs, or if I am downstairs, I'm briefly filming an unboxing video, or I'm in the kitchen baking or cooking. Which means the oven's on and that provides heat. So I just, I mucked around with my schedules and managed to save quite a bit of money. Don't get me wrong, we're still bloody cold downstairs, but it's upstairs matters more because that's where my office is, that's where the bedroom is, and the kitchen, at the bathroom I mean. Torture chamber, you know, all the important rooms. Nope. Oh. Yeah, it's 66 a month between now and April. And then that's it. <laughs> well, there's a lot of horrors. Hang on a second, I can make use of this room. Let's actually start using this character's mechanics instead of ignoring them. Okay, we got ourselves a little army. But you know what else I was expecting during the stream that never happened but has happened in some of the Overwatch 2 highlights I've made? The resurgence of people who make themselves look stupid by going to a video that is a highlight of a match where I did really well and saying, hey, you play badly, thus making themselves look stupid because there's literal video proof of that not being the case. The, the smart thing to do would be go to a stream where there will be bad matches because it's like 50-50 basically and wait for a bad match and then say, hey, you're bad because then at least you're right. You're still rude and we'll get banned. But at least you're right, instead of making yourself look like a dumbass. Although I can tell I'm matured now, though, because instead of pointing out how stupid these pricks are, I just ban them and be done with it. Let them be stupid, let them scream into the void. Whoa. It's like, oh yeah, there's asshole. Like, I've watched world-class players. And there's still comments like that there too. Whoops. Like they're literally watching the best people at any particular hero in the world and being like, no, they're not that good. They, there's just people who are like that. Thank you, Yoshi, for using your Twitch Prime for the 74th time in a row. <laughs> 74 times in a row with a Prime that doesn't auto-renew. Thank you very much. Banish the children to the Shadow Realm, exactly. Though I bet they're not all children. <laughs> Most of them will be man babies too. Because keep in mind, like, Overwatch is six years old now, so they have to at least be six years older than when it started. So even if there were like twelve back then, they're they're nearing twenty. They're jealous of my ability to fist, and that's okay. Not everybody can do it. It takes a lot of prep time and studying, and you've got to know how to get behind your opponent, hit them hard and fast, try not to get stuck, and then jump back out. Oh, 
Oh, and never fist Diva in our mech. It hurts. Do you mean that took a turn? I was giving you perfect strategy for using Doomfist. My new favorite hero. Oh, right. You watched the Barney video, but you were in it. You were there. You lived it. How is turning it into a mimic a better thing? Same sucks. Am I going to play Brotato again? Yes, it's just exceptionally difficult to fit it into the schedule right now. I played more of it than is on YouTube, for the record. I, I ended up doing two more runs after that one, but I didn't record them separately. The VOD is still on Twitch somewhere, though. Because that was the one and only time at present we played it. I played as the old man Patel, and that was a good run. And then I think I tried the fat one, I don't quite remember. A little bit skyable. Oops. Welcome to the stream. Were you looking for Isaac, or are you over from YouTube? So I wouldn't be expecting top-notch Isaac play, I'm mostly concentrating on what I'm saying, rather than playing. You, you speed up when you get excited? Yeah, I, I think that's true. That's natural though, it's because it's the, the adrenaline makes you talk faster. Oh, it was unrecommended, wow. That's rare. Someone at Twitch must have heard that I tried streaming on YouTube and I'm like, get him back! He tasted the other side, stop him. We're doing no damage because I've had no damage ups, so the run is pure pain right now. And I keep walking into shots, which doesn't help. Well, actually, maybe it does, because I get flies over that. You watch a lot of small streamers. I used to be a big streamer back in the day. I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it. And what is it is new and scary to me and also softcore pornography. Well, there's a range up to counter those pills I was taking for no reason. <coughs> Time to become a VTuber. Is that Quag? No, that's not Quagmire. That's Stan, right? Is that Stan? I think I think it is. It's Joel. Oh, it is Joel. You're right. You know the guy who voices Joel does the narration and video explanation for safety for a ride at Disneyland. He has a very recognizable voice, so I notice it when I hear it. I guess work is work, but it's just a weird place to hear him because I didn't realize who, like it's not a themed ride, it's not like a family guy ride or whatever. Or a king of queens or whatever the hell I, he was in. It's Patrick, is it a Patrick Among Us? Yeah, since we have, I mean, this run is going nowhere, but since we have more this space to nice. fill. Oh! I hate to kill it wasn't a rare Tama! It was a rare Genji! Thank you, Tavis, for resubbing 73 times in a row. You found one of the new moats, which is to say an old emote, because I brought back a really old, uh, whatever call 8 bit Genji. Although that's from the game, but. 
Can I briefly talk about how truly terrible the She-Hulk finale was? I can't- I, I wanna say what the finale was because it means that it doesn't matter, it's just it's garbage. Like, utter, utter garbage. You will not believe me if I explain what it is. Like, if I tell you and you don't know, you'll think I'm lying. Uh, sure. More to better, I think. Okay, I got one yes you may, so if you do care, and you really, really shouldn't. Health. Well, down. I see. No, they, they kind of had no plot for the whole season, although in the penultimate episode she does have sex with Daredevil, which just seemed like an insult for some fans, really. Not as She-Hulk, she would break him in two, as normal human form. Don't get me started on the way they portrayed Daredevil and Stanley, but the finale, they don't really set up anything, so they just kind of throw in uh, a guy who stole her blood without ever explaining how her blood was stolen and she didn't wake up while her blood was stolen. And they had to set up right at the start of the season that when she's sleeping she reverts from Hulk form because otherwise the story wouldn't make any well, quote unquote story wouldn't make any sense. So anyway, she finds a person that's been trolling her online and it happens to be the person she tried to date at one point and she had her blood stolen by someone he hired to date her and then he injects the Hulk blood and even though Bruce said at the top of the season anyone else who takes it would die from it he doesn't die from it, he turns into an evil Hulk and then good Hulk appears blames Abomination because Abomination is there they start having a fight and then She-Hulk says, no, this is terrible, this makes no sense, this is stupid. And then it cuts to the Disney Plus home screen. She-Hulk breaks out of her show, goes into the Marvel behind the scenes show, which is a few windows down, to talk to Kevin Feige. She gets into an argument with her writing team. She breaks into where Kevin Feige is. He's betrayed as a robot. And then she argues with him about the cinematic universe. She asks questions that they know fans want the answers to, to be jokes, I think. Like, where are the X-Men and stuff like that. And then Kevin Feige, robot, asks her what she wants. And she says, I want this, I want this, I want this. And then they give her the ending she wants, where there's no violence. She sues the person that stole her blood successfully. Abomination goes back to jail. And... Matt Murdock shows up one last time because she likes him and wanted to gloat and literally wink at the camera that she had sex with him. And then that's the ending. Oh, and then Hulk shows up and shows off his son for no reason. And that's how it ends. I'm not exaggerating, that's literally what happened. Hulk does have a son in the comics, for the record, but there's absolutely no setup. It never goes back to explain who attacked her and Bruce at the top of the season. It never explained why Wong thought it was acceptable to break Abomination out of prison, and he does it again at the end of the season, in a post credit scene. It doesn't explain why he's wanted for breaking Abomination out of jail, and then next week he's the client, and it's okay. Like, there's literally no plot, and then they try to laugh about it, and it's terrible. And they had such a good thing. It started really, really well. It was very, very good when it started. The first two episodes are great. Then it gets really, really middling. Then the character assassinated Wong, Daredevil, and just shit the bed, and then wallowed in it. And it's a shame too, because the lady playing She-Hulk is really good. She was great. Wasn't there a whole thing about how Bruce was never able to have kids? Well, it's a Hulk kid though. He's, he's merged with the Hulk now, so it's okay. Or something. Again, it doesn't explain it, so who cares? Come at the king. You better not miss. That's the other rare one. Thank you, Truth About Falling, for using your Twitch Prime again. Uh, sorry, not Twitch Prime, your subscription again. My bad. Two in a row, five in total. 
I only watched the whole three episodes and couldn't keep going. You've watched enough. Those are the good episodes, and if you hated them, you're not going to like anything else. One day down the line, there's going to be a long rant from me about how they assassinated Daredevil. That day is not today, but it will be coming. It was nice to see him again, though. Even though it was an abomination, pardon the pun, kind of. Like, She-Hulk fighting Daredevil was pretty fun. But then he had him telling jokes and then... You know, I think part of the thing, like, the villain, sort of, of the season was internet trolls. So it felt like they were kind of preempting reaction to the show. And part of it was, like, these internet trolls within the series calling her a slut. In two episodes spanning the same week, she sleeps with two different men on their first day. Well, not on their first date. On their first meeting in one instance, and on their third date in the other. Isn't that kind of proving them right? Kind of? <laughs> Shouldn't you get to know people first? I mean, I, I get that it's Daredevil, but still. So anyway. It was, it was okay to start with, but then it got real bad. Well, no, it was better than okay. It started really well. I, I really liked the first episode. And the second episode is okay. But they clearly had no idea what they were doing, which is very strange. This is the mom fight. We missed... Oh, we haven't missed anything. I'm going to pretend I did that on purpose to speed up the fight a little bit. No, when Matt Murdock appeared, her she looks at the camera and says, Who's this asshole? Because he's representing uh, the the person she's trying to sue in the episode he appears. And she's representing the person that turns out to be the villain of the episode, by accident. The episode could have worked with just a slightly different shift in tone for Matt's character as Daredevil. Oh yeah, he, he wins because he's in the right. Yeah, she isn't a very good lawyer. Also, there's no explanation from the penultimate episode to where the final episode starts on how they arrested her. The penultimate episode starts with her, or ends with her, sorry, being pissed off in She-Hulk form and people being scared of her. And all of a sudden there's like an anti-Hulk unit just there, instantly. Because apparently they knew it would happen or something. And then it's just the next episode she's in human form in the same set that they kept Abomination in because it's cheaper that way. It's like, you're just gonna, you, they missed out swaths of story through the whole thing and then they were left with nothing. But again, she gets the ending she wants by complaining to the creator, so all that's just forgotten. She's back to being She-Hulk and a lawyer. She didn't get fired, she didn't go to jail making everything that happened, what little there was anyway, irrelevant. Oh yeah, it was also a little bit in bad taste at Disney poking fun at their own, like, animators. Because she talks to Kevin Feige and she helped for him and then he says, can you please turn back to human form, you're very expensive. And she's like, oh, okay, fine. Like, is that them making fun of the fact they worked their animators to the bone and still couldn't come up with really, really good CG? It looks fine, for the record. It just doesn't look great. Yeah, there was no point to the show. It was meant to be a comedy. The point was that it was funny. And it was, at times. But, 
you've got a movie like Spider-Man Homecoming, that's a comedy and it manages to have plot and drama and stakes. There's only one consistently good Marvel Disney Plus show and it was Hawkeye. That's the only good one. I have problems with the finale just because they character assassinated Kingpin, but the show itself is still the best from start to finish. Yeah, maybe they'll do better with the second season. No, but they didn't design it to hold someone with great strength because they're surprised when he can turn into Abomination. And then she uses that as part of the argument to get his parole because he, she says, like Luke, he can become Abomination, he chose to stay in his cell, he could have escaped at any time. So if Abomination could escape at any time, so could She-Hulk, presumably. I really disliked you, Loki, sadly. That, that was not for me. Fighting these with poor range is a bad time. We're definitely going to die on this floor, incidentally, but at least I made the run last long enough. We can move on. I really, really worry for that Daredevil reboot. It will not be as adult as the Netflix version, which was made for adults. Well, there we go. 